All right, so, so Hackwix. It was designed in like the 1980s for the military. We're on Gen 3. This is what I have in front of me, Gen 3, levels 1 through 7. Um, this stuff was kind of developed in 2007, fielded to soldiers in Afghanistan. It really extends the range of the environments you can operate in. Equix stands for Extended Cold Weather Clothing System, developed by ADS. So, really, when it, before we get to talking about how you use the system, you got to understand the three parts of the cold weather clothing system. Those being base layer, mid layer, chill. What that is, so base layer, there's really two, type, two types. There's synthetics and there are wool and other natural materials. So when you think about synthetic, it means man-made like polyesters, like dry fit materials. If you think about like Under Armour type stuff, we'll talk about what where this falls into those later, but that's what we're talking about when we're talking about synthetic base layers. Benefits of them are they dry quickly. They're generally um, a little bit more expensive, so that's downside. A little bit more expensive than things like wool, cotton, the natural materials, but it dries really quickly and it moves moisture from your skin. It does start to stink out for a little while, but not too bad. Natural materials, so you have cotton, wool, things like that. Cotton sucks. Just we're going to get that out there. Everybody's heard cotton kills. Yeah, we're not going to talk about it anymore. Cotton's not what you want to wear. Um, wool, however, a lot of people use merino wool. A lot of people wear merino wool socks. Those are really good. Uh, some of the benefits of them are they retain warmth when wet. So if your feet get wet, or you're wearing something and it gets wet, it might not dry quite as quickly as synthetic, but it retains more of a percentage of that warmth that is insulating value. That's what we're talking about. And um, downsides are it's a little bit more expensive and it doesn't wick moisture quite as well. It's pretty good, but it doesn't also stink whenever you wear it for a long time quite as badly as some of the synthetics like polyester. <laughs> Just remember, don't wear cotton. That's all you need to know. Mid layers. So mid layers are the level between your next to skin base layer and then your shell that protects you from elements. So the mid layer is you got to think about that's what keeps you warm. That's the insulation layer. Um, there are two main like categories if you want to think about it. There's fleece, like kind of uh, you know everybody wears fleece hoodies, sweatshirts, whatever. And then there's like more lofted materials, so synthetic uh, loft. And then there's down loft. Everybody knows what down is, it comes off of the underside of birds like geese and ducks. And it does a really good job. It's like pretty incredible about the warmth to weight ratio. It's really lightweight, retains a lot of warmth. Um, there's all kinds of stuff you can look into fill power. It's about how much um, loft a certain a one ounce of down or synthetic. We're actually just we're talking about natural down, what that has. Um, but synthetic is cheaper. And also on the topic of uh, moisture, it retains warmth when wet. So synthetic down is usually what you'll find in things like the army sleep system and uh, most things mass produced because down obviously comes from live animals. So it's not great, great for mass production and it's expensive, but uh, it's lighter. It does some of the newer downs are hydrophobic treated. So they stay, um, they don't absorb moisture as much. So they do retain more warmth when wet. However, synthetic still is the king of uh, multi-condition lofted materials. Fleece. Another type of mid-layer is fleece. So Polar Tech, some of those types of uh, names and brands come to mind. But fleece does a really good job with uh, retaining warmth when wet. It doesn't have quite as high of an insulation value as lofted materials like synthetic and down. But it's cheap and it does a good job when wet. And it's... Uh, kind of low low bulk for um, some of the stuff that we have available for us, like the waffle top, which we'll talk about in a bit. Shells. So hard. Sh there's two main categories of shells. That's the outer layer you're going to wear to uh, protect you from the elements, keep your insulation layers, your mid layer, and your base layer dry. Um, shells really fall into two categories, soft shell and hard shell. A lot of people will talk about the common names we use for them are – Soft shells for your level fives and hard shells for your Gore-Tex. Uh, Gore-Tex is a name brand. It's uh, one of the first that created a synthetic uh, waterproof breathe breathable mem membrane. So how breathable it is, because if you think about a hard shell, you could also use a trash bag or something like that. Is it like 
uh, you know, a tarp is considered a shell, but it's not really breathable. It doesn't move moisture out. So it gets very clammy and wet on the inside and doesn't help with that moisture management um, challenge that you face when you're building a clothing system. But uh, the Gore-Tex, the hard shell, hard shell is better for like straight up downpour, rain. Uh, it's going to shed water better than a soft shell and it has wind resistance, but it's not going to be as good for active things, moving, uh, rucking, whatever you're doing. A soft shell However, is more it has less of a waterproof coating. So when you're talking about waterproof versus water resistant, waterproof is what it sounds like, and water resistant is it'll stand up to light moisture if it's misting, even snowing, but it's not gonna have the same level of waterproofness as a uh, a true Gore-Tex. But water resistant, it'll last for a little while. It's usually got a DWR, which is a durable waterproof. As DWR, which is durable waterproof repellent, which is like a coating that goes on the outside that kind of gives it a little bit of water resistance and that kind of fades over time. The more you use it, the more you wash it. Some areas will wear out faster, like your shoulders for where you put your straps to your rock or a backpack or whatever you're doing. Um, it's pretty wind resistant. It's good for active movements because that moisture travels outwards um, at a greater rate than it does inside of a hard shell. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the layers that we have. Now you kind of understand base layer, mid layer, outer layer, or shell. Level ones. So we have seven la- levels of the Equix system. Level one, you got your silks, as a lot of people call them. They're not actually made of silk. Silk is a natural base layer that you can use. It's extremely expensive. This is synthetic. The base layer, silk, top and bottom, that we are issued actually does a really good job moving moisture away from your skin. And that's what it's all about. Like when you start sweating, you want to move that. If you think about your layers, so base layer, shell, you want the moisture to be wicked away from your body, your sweat, move through your mid layer and eventually out of your base layer when you dry. So you can keep your base layers dry because that's very important for remaining comfortable in a cold weather environment. So silks are what you use as a base layer. Those are pretty much going to stay the same. Like, the whole system because it's like the base you interchange other parts of the system but once it drops down to a certain temperature you can start using that base layer um you can wear this under any of these layers you'll probably leave it on the whole time in the winter or like a mountain peak or field training you're probably not going to change out of that unless you get soaked waffles so this is level two a lot of people call them waffle top it's got a it's grid fleece is really what it is but that little grid pattern looks kind of like a waffle. I guess that's why people started calling it that. Patagonia was actually the first people to develop these. And uh, this system, like whenever the Gen 3 was coming out, it's been used for a while. There's also other brands people have used, like Polar Tech, things like that. They're all good, but this grid fleece is awesome. The little grids, the little boxes are designed to help move moisture away from you. You'll wear that lots of times over top of the silks, level ones. So it's like compounding layers until you get to a certain level you think about stacking them on top of each other level twos you can wear these next to your skin but generally you're going to have better luck wearing ones and then twos on top so silks then waffles a lot of times people will wear the top not the bottoms bottoms are a pain because you got to take your boots off and take them out but take them off but the uh the waffle top that is literally going to be your first level above um your base layer your synthetics your synthetic uh level ones you know where you're level two your waffle level three okay everybody knows this jacket it's really comfortable feels great but you're not supposed to wear it as an outer layer that's definitely important to know because this material this this is considered also a fleece it's got more like the little uh fibers on it that traps the warm air and keeps you warm it's not very wind resistant, but it's super warm, comfortable. You can wear that in the system. So you could go one, two, three, and then some sort of shell on top. But you're never going to go just level uh, three with nothing, unless you're just like sitting in your tent or your shelter or whatever, and you're just chilling. But anytime you're in the elements, this is going to be terrible because if it gets wet, then it's going to be a nightmare. And this is going to lose a lot of its inf- insulation value. It's not going to dry quickly. You don't wear that as an external layer. However, this is super comfortable if you pair it with one of the this category, so the four through six. Moving into the 
4. It's the wind jacket. A lot of people wear. It's got the slanted pocket, slanted name tapes. No uh, Velcro on the sleeve, so no patches. But this is a great layer. Like I think it's really underutilized. People don't wear it a lot in garrison because you don't have any of your cool little um, patches on it. But it's great because it is not super water. It's considered a soft shell. It would fall into the category of soft shell. It's the wind jacket. It's highly resistant to wind, as you would expect. It's not super resistant to water. It uh, it can it has a light DWR on it, so if it's misting or like lightly raining or snowing, it'll be all right. But once it starts getting into any heavier level of precipitation, you're gonna want to move up into a higher um, category. But this uh, as a it's your first layer that is considered an outer layer or a shell wind shell. So you'll insulate underneath with one of these items, or even some people will wear. You can find these at uh, surplus stores a lot. This is this is a people call a smoker's jacket, field jacket liner, and what it is, it's a synthetic insulation that's lofted. So it it's uh it has a little bit of a puffiness. A lot of people know like their civilian puffy jackets. Those are lofted, so it's going to trap that warm air between your body, and then trapping that in. A system with a shelf, so four through six. But if you don't need to buy that, you can use these three and stay perfectly warm down to really like probably single digit temperatures. If you if you go all like one through four on top of each other, you'll probably be good. Level fives. A lot of people call them soft shells. These ones do have Velcro on the sides. Um. So level five is a very common uniform worn in winter months by units. And the benefit of it is it's, uh, it retains a lot of warmth. You can wear any of these layers under it. Typically it's not like completely wrong, but you shouldn't be wearing your level four underneath your level five. This is going to be your shell mid layer, mid layer, base layer. You could wear the level two as a base layer, but level fives are pretty, they're pretty good. They're, they're that soft shell material we talked about. So, they have a light, they have greater water resistance than level four, but not quite as much as your Gore-Tex. It's a good uniform because you can still look like you're wearing a real army uniform and uh, stands up to the elements a little a little better. Snow, light rain, wind resistant. It's really, it's uh, probably the most common top you'll see worn in the winter months um, around Fort Drum and other cold duty stations. You're going to wear one of these, uh, an assortment of like base layer. So if you're wearing this top, you should probably be wearing the base layer. Sometimes you wear it, people wear it right over top of the regular ACUs. It's not wrong, but it's not part of the Equix system. It's not going to like keep you warm. It's a lot of times like, oh, we got to go out to a cold formation, go down in the motor pool, throw your level five on. It's not completely wrong, but you'll have better luck and you'll be warmer if you're wearing the uh, Equix system underneath it. Now, if it's really snowing hard or it's uh, raining, actively raining, you're going to want to wear your level six top and bottom or just top. The material on the inside, this gray, shiny material, or some people have systems that are black, have a black interior. That's the that's the water. That's like the membrane that's in there, the waterproof membrane. And that will only be used um, when it's snowing heavily, raining heavily you're in a wet environment for an extended period of time that can be layered on top of these mid layers and base layer. And it's actually really effective for uh, extended wet weather wear. Lastly, level seven, you almost never see anybody wearing this. People call it marshmallow suit, puff suit. It's got a lot of synthetic insulation in it. So it's, it's a highly lofted jacket. It's for, not for design for movement. So it's for like static environments when it's very cold. It's basically a big sleeping bag you're wearing on you. Straight, it's puffy. You look like the Michelin man, but it will keep you warm and it'll let you um, survive down to extreme temperatures. So this does not fall into the category of a shell. This is um, an insulation piece that you're only going to wear static. Like if you really had to, you could put your level six on top of seven, but otherwise you got to think about wearing, stacking them up until you get to four. And then this is its own shell. So you're not going to wear like your level four under your 
uh, Gore-Tex. You can if you need to. It's usually going to be one of these items with a shell on top of it. All right, that is the system itself. You can combine them however you want within reason for the environment you're in. So you always want to think about starting cold when you're about to do a movement or something active so you don't get too sweaty because the name of the game is moisture management. And if you get wet, it will lead you to a bad spot. You get hypothermia or end up um, reducing the amount of insulation you're trapping with, the amount of heat you're trapping with the insulation layers, your mid layers, and it's going to end up being a bad situation. But start cold when you get static. Before you get cold, put some layer up, put on your uh, level three, your waffle top, whatever it is, to start trapping that heat before you cool down, and then you're going to have to build that heat up again. Um, but yeah, the Equix system.